anyway, yeah, so this is um, collaboration work with the University of Toronto um, and Imperial College, which is mine. I'm a physicist, so I kind of humbly approach the archaeologists with a bit of maths and hopefully everything works out fine. Uh, essentially what I'm trying to do is sort of, sort of oh, right, well, it's kind of like maximum ignorance modelling, so we're kind of going back to basics, uh, as, as is my maximum ignorance of, of archaeology. So, uh, yeah, so Paula's should be around later, but if not, it's fine. And there's some collaboration with Ray Rivers, who's my supervisor, supervisor, and Tim Evans, who's my supervisor, and they're physicists as well. Um, so, warming up, I'll just get on with it. So, yeah, so there's two modeling frameworks, one in which you get some of the inductive and deductive modeling. So the inductive modeling is derived from patterns and observation of the data. This would be kind of like, oh, let's have big data, let's kind of extract the patterns perhaps humans don't see. But often the case we don't usually end up with such detailed data. The deductive modeling process is kind of say, oh, well, I imagine the interaction takes place as a function of distance. I imagine the interaction takes place as a function of some other property, geography, the cultures, you know, pre yeah, predispositions to interact with parties you already have. Um, and this is sort of the fallback position for poor data. Uh, so what we see is that we kind of, the problem is we have big data, but not poor, you know, uh, just lots of stuff, you know, we have lots of stuff catalogued uh, with poor statistics. Uh, so we kind of call it dirty data in a, in a, in a kind of uh, funny way. Uh, and we need to negotiate between these two, these two pathways. Uh, and with our work with the Mycenaean Aegean, we're saying, uh, um, you know, let's kind of put two and two together in terms of deductive and inductive modelling and, and try and reach uh, something in between. So the talk plan here is kind of doing the inter- uh, Intro and local data, we're kind of looking at the pots, uh, where they come from, uh, that's, that's maybe the import origin, uh, and then the relationship, uh, the network, which is formed as a result of saying, oh, these two pairs are interacting with each other via imports. Uh, we won't have time to look at the local network, which is kind of on Crete itself, and the multiple scales at which the interactions uh, occur won't be fully addressed here, so because we've only got 15 minutes. Um, there we go. So yes, so what the data is, Thanks to Paula from the University of Toronto, we've got this uh, LM3 data, uh, and I said the R is in three time slices, but for this we're just going to conflate the three uh, or more. Uh, we've got five decomposition uh, uh, deposition sites: uh, Moklos, Konos, Hania, uh, Palapesta, and these ones. And then we've got uh, basically nine thousand pots, which is kind of huge data set for this type uh, of uh, this type of data. Uh, but yet, you know, utilizing it, it, it is not not completely uh, trivial. Uh, sure, sorry. So yeah, so what we've got, we've got kind of these are the classifications it falls onto. There's the settlement sites, we've got like, amphoras, cups, jars, calyxes, and, and then this all comes as thanks from uh, from Paula. Um, so yeah, so here's a nice little plot. So we're looking at these sites on Crete, uh, and uh, yeah, so this is the five we're looking at, and these are the many others that are recorded on on the site. Oh, on, on the island. So yeah, there's two, two interrelated uh, uh, things going on here. So what we're trying to establish is whether the relationships and the positions kind of already uh, push this kind of, oh, let's see what the Mycenaean influence is and can we, can we infer that? Uh, anyway, so yeah, so this is kind of the whole, what we call the big potato, the five distribution sites, and then 45, 41 endpoint origins, da da da. So local data from five sites, in Crete, you know, it's a very little little picture. We don't have quite enough data to do big data. We don't have, we have enough to, to not just throw it in the bin and just go back to kind of purely theory modeling. Um, the simplest null model we can think of is just looking at like what our proximity to the coast is and whether coast kind of, the amount of accessible coast kind of just leads to the size of settlement as a result. So the, the, the kind of the basis, not the basis, the inspiration for this kind of derives from this paper where you can, you can plot quite a, a, a good, good fit, like relationship-wise, towards the amount of coastline accessible from a settlement and the size the settlement became. So we'll keep that in mind uh, as we go forward. So what I went for is a kind of an attachment protocol that's quite simple. What we're saying is like, oh, there's a lower bound where basically it's the same place where you are now. So I'm not going to kind of talk to you. It's kind of like your grandma's house or your parents' house. I can just walk down there anytime I want. So, you know, it's not the kind of, that's not the interaction scale of, of interest. You kind of say, oh, what's the upper bound? Where can I travel to by car or by, you know, some sort of feasible means? And then beyond would be something like, oh, I need a ship or something like that. So you literally, you could find this kind of 
I say Goldilocks region where I say, oh, this is what I'm going to travel within this mode of transport, this, this type of interaction. And then I connect. Uh, as I said, it's just right. So as we form these networks, this is from 200 kilometers kind of attachment protocol, you actually recover quite, you know, quite nicely uh, what, what would be the kind of Mycenaean influence, uh, as judged by like the Tartaros one source. Um, and you kind of just get this for free just by attaching and connecting the dots, as I have. And then we kind of keep expanding. And then we start to see the longer scale interactions, which occur about 450 kilometers, stuff like that. Now, this can uh, be represented in a graph, which is, I I'm hoping this is kind of what you guys want in computational methods. What you see, interestingly, is that this characteristic length scale of interactions occurs sort of, you know, just before 200, uh, well, 200 kilometers. You see they're all balanced, which is, and, and you kind of learn that that's about the characteristic length scale of interactions, you know, sort of around 100. Uh, and this is for degree centrality. So this is the number of nodes you can get to in kind of one jump. Uh, so kind of direct forms of travel. So now the next centrality we'll look at is, is, is between a centrality, which is like the largest numbers of shortest paths, like a stop off point, for example. And what you hear, you see here is very interesting, like high sensitivity around about 120, 100 and something kilometers. So what you see is that the, the system is inherently uh, very sensitive to, 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 to that thing, which is almost exactly the characteristic sail of a, a Mycenaean ship, you know, about 120, 150 kilometers range. So it's kind of like saying, oh, the settlements are placed exactly in the right place such that you can jump and use these kind of, so it's like, oh, everything's placed as it should be. Uh, and if it wasn't there, then it wouldn't, the ships wouldn't quite get there in time. And then, you know, so the attachment protocol in, de you know, in, in the gist of it is a kind of, I, I, I look at this range, I connect, and then I check how central I am. I move, I check how central I am. I go bigger range, check how central I am. And then what you see here is a very interesting sensitivity at the very large range, which is where I start to connect to the wider, wider regions and not just the kind of the Mycenaean influence. So, um, yeah, it kind of just interestingly gives you a bit of a, a bit of a, yeah, it's just, oh, we are, we are sensitive to distance and this is the characteristic length scale of, sort of travel. And, and I said any unexplained things, you kind of, the winds and tides and, and these other, you know, more detailed explanations may be required. Um, yeah, so just in terms of an interesting computational check, I use a kind of a method called jackknifing, which is essentially where I remove one node, check any of these values are still true. Um, I said, I, I don't know if equations are too much here, uh, but it's quite simple. So this is kind of what I call like the graph card, and then the ensemble of cards is the whole thing. Uh, the methodology is basically, you kind of remove a node, do the same computation, and do that for every node, and just check everything doesn't go, doesn't go crazy as a result of flicking one of them out. Uh, basically, you recover almost identical graphs. So you can say, oh, well, actually, the system's quite robust. So actually, you know, if I remove one node, it's not critical. Perhaps, I, I mean, you can move up to maybe like six or something like the square root of, of, of the total value if you really wanted to test this out. But you can still see that these are, these are quite persistent. So there's no, one out, there's no one outlier settlement that's kind of really throwing this off. Although, towards the end, it is interesting. And then we look at the variance of this, which is kind of like the spread of these guys, and, and you see a kind of... This, this is all quite, quite very, these are very, very small actually, although it is increasing. And interestingly, you see this big, big jump in variance here, which again indicates the, the where Palacastro, which is at the actually the east of the island, suddenly connects to the big cluster and just goes, pfft. so you can see that, again, rather than showing the robustness of the network, it, it shows another, another layer of double sensitivity to these length scales. So you kind of see, especially here with this, this variance one, uh, you know, uh, between this, it's like, oh yes, I travel about 150 kilometers, that's really important to me. And then I have another guy about four something else, which is probably when I visit grandma for Christmas, who lives in, in, in Cyprus or something, I don't know. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, and it kind of ties in a lot of work on strength of weak ties and stuff. But um, yeah, how am I doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. So then, um, yeah, so what we're kind of saying basically is, is that these models are super simple, right? I'm just going, oh, can I talk to this guy? Can I talk to this guy? How important am I? Can I talk to this guy? How important am I? You know, so can a character possibly capture all this interesting archaeology and interesting interactions? Some of it works, some of it doesn't. Uh, so kind of it's, this is the kind of the maximum, it, it, actor and intra, ugh, maximum ignorance approach which you're trying to adopt, um, where you say, well, let's look at the simplest possible non-models which can't possibly, possibly work. Um, and then they do, but not all the time. And I think that's the, the message here. So you kind of, you're picking out sensitivities uh, and interest to the, the, the situation you're in. So... Um, yeah, so the normal is two symptoms by definition. Let's learn more about looking at, you know, let's talk to the archaeologist. So these are the input oranges that they come in. You can see all this kind of makes sense. It's coming like 
round the island, you know, it's coming down the island, it's, you know, it's coming. But that just kind of makes sense, this kind of makes sense. And then you kind of have these Egyptian ones, that kind of makes sense. The six of these, oh wait, now we've got this kind of, oh, let's, Hamas is over a bond. Okay, so people go around the island, that makes sense. You know, so, uh, oh, sorry, let me go five here. And then, so, you know, people must be, there must be some reason why, and I took some other archaeologists saying all this, kind of leftover, you know, ports. So once you build a port, obviously you have to, you know, that, that's a drawing of itself. It's set on a certain size, it's a drawing of it itself, which, which could make up for some of the reasons why these, uh, these things don't work. Yep, so perhaps a more sophisticated approach. Uh, this is one of the possible, you know, there's a task rolling game. It's nice to I guess the wind and tides have actually go certain ways round with the tides, so that would give you a preference kind of hopping across the island, maybe you have to hop around. And the Ulubaram routes as well are all super interesting. And if you look at this, it kind of, you know, it echoes, echoes that situation. If you give in some sort of minimum jumping distance, and you kind of go for that. So in conclusion, you say this is a simple distance attachment protocol. We show the emergence of uh, a Mycenaean influence, as it were, um, and this component is going to be kind of accounted for. You got commerce appears to be very important, uh, possibly due to some sort of skewed data. You can't always throw that out, um, and and also has a really supremely uh, diverse range of imports. Uh, this goes against some distance assumptions, so we kind of we can probably, kind of maybe make up for those with the archaeologists. And then a caricature of a complex system, simplest one can capture the characteristics of trade interaction. Uh, as I said, moving forward, it's just a matter of. Uh, Doing this on the smaller scale, bigger scales, and uh, and and we've also begun looking at whether open and closed pottery kind of travels differently. Whether you know closed vessel uh, is is something for travel, and open vessels are for, for I don't know ritualistic. Paula taught me <laughs> some things, <clears throat> and and then again, spreading the time slices would be would be awesome. So uh, I'll see you around. But thank you for listening. Hopefully that's.